A benchmark station A is located at coordinates 135,765.23 feet north and 349,231.57 feet west within the state coordinate system. The elevation at the top of the peg at this station is 453.94 feet above sea level. Station B is sighted from instrument located at station A. Height of instrument is 4.76 feet. The elevation of the top of building located at coordinates 136052.44 feet north and 348535.29 feet west is 595.21 feet above sea level. What is the zenith angle of the line of sight from the instrument to the top of the building? All right. So I suggest, first of all, let's go ahead and sketch what is this problem stating? We've got two stations, station A and station B. So station A and somewhere along the line, station B. We are given the coordinates of station A, 135, 765.23 north and 3492315 west all right moving forward the elevation at the top of the peg at this station is 453.94 feet let me represent that the elevation at this station is 453 Point ninety four feet. Station B is sighted from instrument located at station A. The height of instrument is 4.76. Let's go ahead and represent that as well. So I'll have the instrument. And this height, I'll write it down here is 453.90. Oh, excuse me. That is totally wrong. This instrument height is not 400, is 4.76 feet. Next, the elevation of the top of a building located at coordinates this and this is 595.21 feet. Here at station B, we have got ourselves a building. Let's pretend that this is a building. And the elevation at the top of this building, we are told, is 595.21. 595.21. Feet. Great. And we're also given the coordinates of point B, the elevation of the top of a building located at coordinates. So we have the coordinates of point B, and they're saying that these are the coordinates at the top of the building. But you're going to agree with me in a minute. I'm going to explain that these coordinates are the same at any point at this location. So we've got one, three, six. Zero five two point four four north. These are feet north. Okay, and we have got three four eight five three five twenty nine feet west. So if we were to pretend that this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and we know y-axis is the same or equivalent to the north-south axis. This is x, x is equivalent to the west-east axis, right? And then this going upward, we can have the z. So y and x coordinates are the same at any point along this line, 
the only difference is going to be the z coordinate this right here but these two remain the same so this these coordinates are the same at any point on z-axis. Hope that is clear. Let's move forward. So I think we have, we're done with sketching this. We have the elevation of the building. What is the zenith angle of the line of sight? Let's now clarify what is the zenith angle. A line of sight from the instrument to the top of the building. Now, we have talked in the past about the azimuths. We have talked about bearings. And we have found out from the definition that azimuths and bearings are, are horizontal angles, meaning if you were to envision that, they are angles parallel or measured parallel to the ground. Now, zenith angle is a vertical angle, and it's measured perpendicular to, to the ground. So in this case, what is the zenith angle of the line of sight from the instrument to the top of the building? What I'm going to do, this is the, the land, right? Going forward like that, and it's vertical from this instrument, the line of sight to the top of the building. It's going to be the this. So this is the line of sight from the instrument to the top of the building, and here, this angle is called zenith angle. And this is what we have to calculate. If I was to connect this line horizontally to the building like this, and then also if I was to do this line, this distance, I'm going to call this X, I'm going to call this Y. If I was to know these two distances, I could calculate this angle right here, which is called the elevation angle. So this is elevation angle. And if I was to calculate the elevation angle, I could easily calculate the zenith angle, which is going to be 90 minus alpha. So we can easily deduct from here that the zenith angle zenith angle is going to be equal to 90 degrees minus the elevation angle. So we have to calculate the elevation angle. Okay, let's see. We have, how much is going to be this distance here? Well, we have this elevation and we also have elevation of point A and we know the height of the instrument, which means that distance y is going to be just the difference between this and this elevation. So elevation at this point is just 543, 453, 453, 94, plus height of instrument, 76 plus. So we get the elevation at the top of the instrument of 4, 58.70 feet. And now we can easily calculate y. Okay, y is going to be equal to 595.21 feet minus 458.7 feet. Take my calculator. And do this pretty quick here. I get 136.51 feet. 36.51 feet. So this distance y, let me go ahead and write it here. It's 136.51 feet. Great. Now let's go ahead and think how are we going to calculate the distance x. Well, pretty easy because we have the coordinates of point A and we have the coordinates of point B. We have to just apply the distance formula. And this is exactly what we're going to do. X is going to be equal to square root of, now I have 135,765 
0.23 minus 136,005244. And this is another thing I like about these problems that once you figure out your, or you have sketched your problem and you know all of the elements, what is the zenith angle, what is the elevation angle, this becomes a geometry problem. Now, three, four, nine, two, three, one, point fifty seven minus three, four, eight, five, three, five, point twenty nine squared. I'll continue this here. And this is equal to, I'll go ahead and use my calculator. You go ahead and use yours. 765.23, 13605.2.44 minus this squared. Next, 349.231.57, 349.231.57, 349.231. Twenty nine minus squared, then add and then square root of this. I get that x. Let's do x. Results x equals to five hundred seven hundred fifty three. Excuse me. Point two feet. Okay. Perfect, now we have X and Y, we can calculate the angle alpha. How do we do that? Well, easy, this is a right triangle. And when we know the two sides to catheters, we apply the tangent. All right, so tangent of angle alpha equals to the opposite over adjacent. And here, tangent alpha is equal to 136.51 feet over 753.2 feet. Take your calculator, do the math with me. 136.51. Divided, and I get 0 0.181. And from here, alpha is going to be equal to arc tangent 0 0.181. And alpha is equal to, let me go ahead and apply arc tangent, and I get alpha equals to 10.3 degrees degrees. Okay, so we got our angle alpha 10.3 degrees and we can easily go back here and calculate our zenith angle now which is going to be equal to 90 minus 10.3 degrees and I am getting that zenith angle is equal to 79 0.73 degrees. And based on all of these answers, it seems this is the correct answer. If you're not sure if at the exam you have other angles starting with 79, it might not be as easy to choose. So you can calculate each angle, how much it is. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So we have done this previously. 79 degrees. How do you transform minutes? into hours, into degrees, well, you divide by 60, and then seconds, 42 seconds, there is 3,600 seconds in an hour, so you divide by 3,600. And then easily do your calculations. I'm gonna have 42, 3,600 divided, 4360 divided, add it up, and then 79 plus, and I get 
0.73 degrees, which is exactly what I have here. Okay, so the correct answer is D.